What's up everybody? My name is Mike Perea. And I'm Chris Perea. In this video, we're going over five different types of light, the challenge that they create, and how you can overcome those challenges. The first type of light we're gonna talk about is front light. This is where the sun is behind the photographer lighting up the subject, so it's actually in front of the subject. One of the best examples of this is Alpenglow. This is where the sun rises or sets behind the photographer and lighting up the subject, usually a mountain or a peak. Now there are two challenges when photographing front light. The first one is using a wide angle. If you have a flat horizon behind you in the direction of the sun, it can cast long shadows and your shadow will be cast right into your frame. This isn't as big of a deal in mountainous areas where the horizon isn't flat behind you. The easiest way to overcome this is having a composition in mind with a longer focal length. This shot here was taken using a long lens and using that front light to really add contrast to the image. The second challenge is the amount of time you have for that kind of light. It's usually not very long. Alpenglow usually happens the last few minutes before sunset or the few minutes after sunrise. You have to be watching and have your composition set up and waiting for these few moments to happen. This is Saratora in Patagonia and we were set up well before sunrise and the Alpenglow here lasted only about three minutes. We were ready so there was no scrambling around. Here are a few other examples of front light. The second type of light we're going to talk about is side light. This is where the sun is either to the right or to the left of the subject, casting light across, usually casting longer shadows, a little more contrasty than front light, and I like to call this light shaping light or sculpting light. It really brings out the textures and the patterns and shapes of whatever that subject is. One of the challenges of side light, as well as front light, is it can change very quickly. A scene where the light is flat and uninteresting can change and become dramatic as the sun comes up over the horizon and lights the subject from the side in a very short amount of time. Learning how to recognize where the sun is coming from and composing your images to really bring out that contrast takes practice. Dunes are one of my favorite subjects for side light. It consistently changes and it's a great way to learn how side light can shape the landscape. In this photo, you guys may recognize, we just took a photo of this uh, just in the last video in Death Valley. Well, we walked up here on top of this uh, sand dune and the light was kind of coming in from the side and you can see how it's really contrasty, it really takes shape and it really gives it more of an abstract look, which is why I love the dunes. And the side light really, really helps and really accentuates uh, the lights and the shadows in those dunes. Now in this image, you have the exact same concept and the exact same light and shadow applying to a totally different subject, like this cloud inversion. Notice how it not only has lots of tonal contrast, but also color contrast from the warm tones in the highlights and the cooler tones in the shadows. Here are a few more examples of the side light. The next type of light we're gonna talk about is backlight. This is where you're shooting directly into the sun and is probably the hardest technically type of light to shoot into. This light can be very dramatic and it's actually common here in the desert because we often shoot from high vantage points down into canyons. The biggest challenge here is the high dynamic range and your camera doesn't handle that extreme contrast very well. One of the techniques you really have to learn how to do is blend exposures. This requires having to take multiple exposures and then blending them together in post-processing. This photo here is a combination of three images to make sure that I captured the entire dynamic range of the brightest highlights all the way down to the darkest shadows. It was a big challenge because the clouds are moving very fast and blending these images together was extremely difficult. Another creative way to photograph backlight is with silhouettes. Simply expose for the highlights and let everything else fall in the shadows. This can create a more dramatic mood because your eyes don't see the shadows the way your camera does. Here are a few more examples of backlight.
This photo is backlit, but also a combination of our next type of light, which is called diffuse light. Diffuse light is also called soft light because the clouds act like a big soft box casting even light over the landscape. Diffuse light can occur in conditions like fog, mist, or snow. This type of light is great for intimate details, black and white, and fine art style images. One of the challenges of diffuse light is it lacks contrast. But this light is a favorite of black and white fine art photographers. You can use methods like dodging and burning and post-processing to bring out the contrast and moodiness of a subject. Now, this photo here is from Glencoe on a really overcast day. In post-processing, I really dodged the highlights in the river to create a leading line leading straight towards the buccal. What's the buccal? The Bucky! Famous mountain in Glencoe. I don't know how to pronounce it. We're gonna put it right here. Uh, I've heard it called the buccal or the buki or the bucky or... <laughs> Diffuse light is my personal favorite kind of light. The lack of shadows make the colors more of a focal point and not the contrast. Like for example in this photo here on an overcast and foggy day, you can really see the difference in the various shades of green, yellow and orange here in the trees. You wouldn't notice this range of color if the light was harsh and contrasty. Here are a few more examples of diffuse light. The next type of light we're going to talk about is reflected light. Reflected light is just light reflecting off of other objects or atmospheric conditions lighting up your subject. Now this type of light is interesting because there are a lot of different ways light can be reflected. The easiest example of this, slot canyons, where light comes into the canyon and bounces off the walls showing a wide range of colors and textures. One of my favorite ways of using reflected light is during clear skies. An atmospheric phenomenon called the belt of Venus happens in the opposite direction of the sun just after sunset or just below sunrise. The pink color is actually sunlight that is shining through atmosphere near the horizon reflecting off of the atmosphere in the opposite direction. The dark blue below the pink belt is actually the Earth's shadow. Another great subject for reflected light is water. Like in this photo here from Watson Lake, many times at golden hour the light and color reflect off the sky and clouds onto the water and create some beautiful glow and add an element of interest to the photo. Here are some more examples of reflections bouncing off water. Now there are going to be times where you have multiple types of light at the same time. You could have backlight with diffuse light or you know a sun, the sun may not be directly behind you or directly 90 degrees and maybe coming off to the side. The key is to understanding these types of light, how they interact with your subject so that you're not in a hurry or you know scrambling around at the last second. Mm -hmm. And now that you learned about light, we created a playlist for you right here on Mike's face with all kinds of different camera techniques that you can learn. So see you over there. Bye.